Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and this video is the second part of the chapter 5 of the book The Origin of Most Problems. So, let's first remember what we talked about in the last video. We met Steven Pinker who was arguing that the world is fine and we do not need to intervene but I think the Trump superhero debunked that pretty well and made it very clear that the world is not fine and that we need to intervene. So then people might come up with rules and laws in order to stop that bad human behavior but the problem is they are not dealing with the cause, with what creates those bad behaviors in the first place. For example, if there's a law which says you're not allowed to steal, but if I lack access to the stuff that I need to take care of my children, for example, then I'm kind of forced to do something, so I might be inclined to steal because I want to take care of my children. So that's the problem with these rules and laws. Um, we remember back the story from the last video where the students flew from school because they didn't want it to be there, it was so boring. The school tried to keep them in the school and they put, came up with a fence, they came up with cameras and guards and all that. But the kids always managed to flee from the school, so yeah, none of that worked. The school should have asked, what if we make our school more interesting or more fun or not competitive? So yeah, that's today's approach, but we can observe in the world today that people are not taking care of the, all those rules and they are giving a shit about them, basically. There is the mafia, the hacker, the smuggler, the terrorist and the cheater. The mafia does another kind of politics through brute force. You don't fuck with the mafia, mafia fucks with you. The hacker breaks any rule you put in front of them. You build walls, they break through them. The smuggler um, are the ones who move stuff and people around the globe without giving a fuck about borders and laws. The terrorists can kill, threaten and kidnap everywhere and everyone. Guns, police, laws, none of them scares them. And the cheater bends the rules and finds the loopholes in every law. From sports to finances, from art to stealing, they are winning. So let's take a closer look at them. The first thing we are going to look at is the Mafia. The Mafia guy is so powerful that is present everywhere in the world. He has millions of members, launders some 1.6 trillion dollars every year. Um, that will be the 11th richest country in the world, richer than Spain, Russia, Mexico or Australia and has more munition than many tribes and has corrupted pretty much every government or law officials out there. He uses submarines, tunnels, tanks, missiles and is a leader in the illegal trafficking of drugs or people. He has survived hundreds of years of regimes, laws, religions or geography. And not only that he does not fear laws or law enforcement agencies, he actually kills them and owns them in many tribes around the world. The Trump superhero is now going to present us mom, <laughs> but not her, but instead the map of mafia, that mom. So basically what um, the Trump superhero did was he um, made a map where you can see like a few or not all of course but a few examples of mafia organizations out there and as we can see on the map there is mafia in pretty much all country around the world um, I think for those grey ones there's data missing but for all these other tribes we um, have some examples like if you click on USA, for example, you can figure out some examples of Mafia here. And for the ones who are a little bit uh, not that red, a little bit lighter red, there's just a Wikipedia page linked there and here you can find some more examples. Um, so yeah, you can explore it by yourself. Just click on any tribe and you will figure out some really interesting facts about 
mafia organizations in those countries. So yeah, this is one of the many original investigations made by Trump. And you know, you can imagine there's a lot of work behind all those things. So um, yeah, there's so much work in that project. I just wanted to mention that um, so that you know. Also creating this book is, <laughs> I think it was a year long effort to collect all the information and put it like very neat together like we see in that book so yeah um, it's unbelievable work made by Tio who did basically everything of that so yeah I just wanted to mention that uh, the Trump superhero now shows us the war on drugs which was declared by UN's members which are basically all tribes um, around the world and um, they said they wanted to eliminate the drug market by 2019, so last year. But what happened? Drug-related deaths have increased by 145% over the last decade, with more than 71,000 overdose deaths in the United States in 2017 alone. At least almost 4,000 people were executed for drug offenses around the world over the last 10 years while drug crackdowns in the Philippines resulted in around 27,000 extrajudicial killings. And yeah, some more statements here. It's just showing that the war on drugs did not work. So yeah, the rule and law is you're not allowed to take any drugs or it's illegal to take them. But what happened is that people do it regardless of any laws and any rules in place. Maybe they see no other choice or opportunity to deal with their problems. And I also watched a video today, I wanted to show it to you um, from our Trump curated tools, our curated videos. And yeah, the documentary is called The Fentanyl Drug Epidemic in North America, made by DW. And it's really interesting and shows how in Vancouver, like people are taking this new thing called fentanyl which is like 10 times worse than heroin and yeah they are just so frustrated with their lives and um, they went through a lot of shit and they only see a way out of that by taking drugs many people die from that it's really interesting and yeah another example is in germany right here people are not allowed to um, smoke marijuana smoke weed but um, what people do, of course, is they smoke weed on a regular basis. I think there's the number of 3 million people and it's not allowed in Germany, it's illegal. So you see, rules and laws are just not working. Another example the Trump superhero shows is robbery, like the thing with you're not allowed to steal. But what we observe throughout history uh, and throughout any kind of um, tribe is that people stealing money from banks many examples provided here here are even some graphics um, created by the Trump superhero and on the last page about mafia he is recommending us several documentaries and yeah it's, it's also the thing with the Trump superhero like he doesn't come up with the, all these things like it's real that's reality you can watch all those and you can see it by yourself. It's not an invented story that's right here. It's sadly reality. The Trump superhero says, overall the mafia with flavors such as gangs, organized crimes, thieves, etc. are a massive deal breaking every imaginable law. They kill, steal, corrupt, get rich, control and manipulate street gangs, prison gangs, drug rings everywhere. So let's look at the next bad student in our world who gives a shit about um, laws and rules. It's the terrorist. And um, yeah, there are many different terrorist organizations on this world today. The three um, which killed the most people are ISIS, the Taliban and Al Qaeda. And these three are also the wealthiest terrorist groups alongside Hezbollah or Hezbollah or Hamas. Here is a graph the Trump superhero is presenting who is the uh, most wealthiest um, 
terrorist organization. And he's saying to put it into perspective, the Drangheta Mafia, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, makes some 30 to 40 billion in profit every year. 13 times more than all of these 10 terrorist groups funding combined. And that's just one Mafia family. So yeah, you can say that the Mafia organizations are bigger and um, also wealthier, richer. But um, the terrorists are very dangerous in that they can create a lot of harm. Um, for example, what, probably the most popular example is the 9-11 event in the USA, where only 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists were able to hijack four airplanes, bypassing every kind of US security, which is super tough. They simply use pepper spray and small knives that were not detected by the airport security and either 5 or 4 hijackers per plane were able to put up with 60 to 80 other people in their plane using only these weapons. So what happened is they killed almost 3000 people, injured over 6000 others and caused at least 10 billion dollars in infrastructure and property damage. And the Trump superhero is asking, isn't it ironic that the greatest terrorist attack happened against the tribe that has the greatest military and security power in the world by far and only done by a small amount of people? So yeah, and these terrorists partially even operated from Germany and they have been observed by the US but um, yeah, still made that um, attack on the um, World Trade Center and the other buildings. So the USA with all of its great army security and intelligence could not stop a bunch of guys from killing thousands of their own on their own territory despite monitoring these suspects. And yeah, what happened then was that the US came up with the war on terror sending thousands or even millions of soldiers into Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, but of course, um, that also didn't solve the problem. Like many civilians died from um, that war on terrorism. And there was even another terrorist organization created by that called ISIS that actually started to form out of detained people by the US forces. Isn't it beyond ridiculous, sad and scary that as a result of some 19 people killing some 3000 others, the retaliation led to 106,000 to 170,000 dead civilians in Afghanistan. And here you can see uh, graphics about terrorism and how it rose pretty much a lot um, since 2010. Um, yeah, and I think there even happened a terrorist attack um, just recently, a few days ago in Vienna, um, which was also, yeah, pretty crazy. I mean, yeah, it's not that far from here, like maybe 400 kilometers or so from here, where I live now in Leipzig, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, um, that's the crazy thing with um, terrorism. And yeah, the Trump superhero says he recommends the following documentaries to see how pretty much all terrorists that created havoc in Europe and the USA were tracked by the law to the point of listening to their mobile phones or spying on them directly, physically. And yet they pretty much were never able to stop any terrorist attack. You will also get to see how these terrorist organizations emerged out of conflict and organized themselves in US or European prisons and how even citizens from the US or Europe became terrorists under the nose of their own tribes. Yeah, let's continue with the smuggler. Smugglers are trafficking people all around the world and probably millions of them throughout any border or throughout any country or tribe. Yeah, it's just uh, crazy. They also smuggle um, weapons, drugs, all kinds of things. And they also, of course, don't care about any law or any rule. And in these documentaries, you can also watch it by yourself, how smuggling is done these days in our world. 
Then there's the cheater which bends the rules from sports to counterfeit goods or finding loopholes in every law. And yeah, the Trump superhero is saying globally counterfeit goods account for some 7 to 10% of the world trade and it is estimated that annually counterfeit goods are at about 1.77 trillion US dollars and it's growing year by year. To put it in perspective, this is some six times more than the entire US appeal clothing market. Yeah, and what's truly mind-blowing the Trump superhero is saying is that this counterfeit industry from food, beverages, appeal, accessoires and footwear to pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, electronics, auto parts, toys and currency has grown over 10,000% in the past 20 years. And 10,000% means that if a small and poor tribe like Moldova which has the population of 3.3 million people, would increase its economy in the next 20 years by that amount, it would become the 16th strongest economy in the world above Saudi Arabia, Turkey, the Netherlands or Indonesia. That's how much a 10,000% increase means. Here you also got it kind of visually. So it's really crazy. And I also, I was surprised that it's so big, so huge, all this counterfeit stuff. Here are some examples like in the US military alone between 2009 and 2010 1800 cases of counterfeit goods were found. So the military can and many times is using counterfeit parts from electronics to rocket launcher parts to ammunition and so forth. Online, for online sales, it is estimated that in 2017 alone, counterfeit products amounted to 1.7 trillion dollars and it is estimated to grow to 4 trillion by 2020. So <laughs> I don't know the current number, but um, pretty crazy. Some more examples. Um, yeah, maybe I just skip that part for now. And um, yeah, also that part because to move on, I mean, you can look everything um, up by yourself. So I just tried to touch upon the most important and interesting things, but I mean, the whole book is so interesting. Um, the Trump superhero shows us now three examples that perfectly describe why laws do not stop crimes and bad behaviors overall. The first example is this urine collecting unit um, which is supposed to be not able to be opened like uh, when you close it. It was used for the athletes in the Winter Olympic Games in Russia in 2014 um, to test for doping, like if the athletes um, were doping during these Winter Olympics. But what happened is the Russians managed to break into this bottle in seconds or minutes time and swept the urine samples like it was no big deal. Thus a top-notch technical barrier was completely hacked in a few minutes time. The second example is about um, the deaths of rhinos from a national park. Um, because people are after their tasks because they can get a lot of money with um, selling those tasks. There are many guards, fences and all kinds of security measures in place. Remember our story about the kids who flew from school with also many fences and security measures in place? And in the documentary The Traffickers, a journalist was called when a rhino died. So um, she saw the guards, the doctor, the one responsible for the security of the park and the authorities. The journalist asks the man in charge of the park, who do you think did it? And he said, it could have been anyone, the guard, the doctor, me, the police, anyone. The black market pays so well that it is easy to bribe anyone. This example proves that no matter the security measures you put in place, humans will always be the weakest link because they can be bribed in our trade-based society. And the last example, is just people who climb um, over a fence, which is the Trump superhero is saying it looks like a zombie movie. So yeah, also fences can be climbed over and yeah, if people are motivated to do so, they will find ways to do that. 
The Trump superhero says, now these three prove how technology, trust or protection do not work in our trade-based society. <laughs> and now he still continues. To me, it's like, it's so crazy because he's providing so many examples um, of the problems of our world and it's just mind-blowing and it's just all real. That's all stuff that happens or happened on, in our world. Um, he would just take his machine gun now and rifle shot at random a bunch of other law cheating and breaking methods and events from our society. The first example is Lance Armstrong, a pretty famous cycling athlete who did doping in order to win some competitions. Then I'm gonna just say a few of those, like one trillion dollars is lost in scams worldwide. Um, babies are being sold in Malaysia. Um, there's money laundering, which is somewhat similar to robberies or frauds. They accounted for 200 billion in the US in 2017 alone, with over 6 billion dollars of these sales involving illicit goods or services sold by nearly 335,000 unregistered merchants. And this is also on the rise and the methods for money laundering are endless. Then another massive scandal are the Panama and Paradise Papers where the super rich are hiding at least 7.6 trillion from tax authorities. Let's continue. We can just take uh, this one in order to avoid paying taxes for their e-waste companies from the Netherlands send their trash as donations to poor countries. Then we can say according to this source the top fraud scandal stole some 214 billion dollars and even this is nothing compared to one single financial company that managed to launder some 378 billion dollars from 2004 to 2007 for Mexican and Colombian drug cartels. This is insane. Then there are crowdfunding websites that are used for fraud but are masked as genuine campaigns. Kidnappings are still happening today and Russia, despite its tough laws against online privacy, is failing to prevent it. And so on and so on and so on. As you can see, I'm, it's just also too much for me. I mean, I cannot read all of that. I just want to suggest you, you can look it up on the book on page 890 to 898 or so. Uh, you can check out everything by yourself. And yeah, here are even some more documentaries recommended. Um, again, you can watch all of those trade free on Video Need. Um, so yeah, we um, forgot the hacker, but the Trump superhero is saying you can just um, analyze the hacker by yourself to see what it is capable of. You can just start clicking here. So yeah, now if we compress all those groups together into one tribe, how powerful would it be? And the Trump superhero is calculating that our tribe would have around 120 million members or even more. We call it the bad tribe and in terms of weapons they would have thousands upon thousands of them. And maybe they are not as sophisticated as the US army for example, but on par with the top world armies. They would have trillions of dollars at their disposal in funding, ranking in the top 10 richest countries for sure and their economy, looking only at counterfeit objects, would be the biggest by far amongst any tribe. If we realize that those 120 plus million members are soldiers, people who are used to kill, plus people who are used to steal and cheat, then their military in numbers will far surpass that of any tribe. In fact, there are some 20 million soldiers on this planet and with those more than 120 million bad people, we could perhaps have an even bigger army than all of the armies in the world combined. All in all, this bad tribe would be really powerful, so powerful that no one could put up with it. Think about the fact that the US Army was not able to put up with a few terrorist groups over the past decades, let alone they couldn't with such a massive bad tribe. The Trump superhero says, now I hope, 
Everyone understands that these bad students that are cheating the world are many, are powerful and are growing. And no laws, no borders, no religion or book of morals is going to stop them. When the statopus and the privatopus are trying to stop the bad students of the world, they fail miserably because like in the case of the school, they did not address what causes those people to break their rules in the first place. The reason Mexico and Colombia are the lands of drugs and drug cartels is because their neighbor, the USA, is the biggest market in the world. If drugs were free in the US, no drug cartel could sell them to US citizens. Most drug lords come from poor backgrounds and areas of conflict and that makes them what they become. The same goes with terrorists who are pretty much all the time given birth to as the result of conflict zones. In more than one sense, the US Statopus is responsible for both the American drug cartels and the Middle Eastern terrorist organizations. Yeah, and here the Trump superhero is just saying again that laws are usually for good people, no mafia members or terrorists are scared of a fine, prison time or even the death penalty. He continues, this whole thing with laws being applied to fix problems is like using surgery to kill cancer. Sure, you will remove some pockets of cancerous cells, but you only need a few of them to remain unsurged and the cancer will come back. Surgery is a primitive way of trying to deal with cancer, the same way that laws are a primitive attempt to put a stop to bad behavior. Today's approach is to ban ropes to try and avoid suicides. The only way to deal with problems is to fix them. You want less crime? Make things available for free or cheap for most people. You want less violence? Make sure people have lots of free time to explore and educate themselves and have access to abundant scientific information. You want no terrorism? Don't go to war and fuck up tribes leaving them in poverty. You want no mafia? Make sure your society is equal enough and does not rely on trades for people to survive and thrive. You want kids to learn? Make education relevant, fun and not mandatory. And so on. So now the kid is back again and he is saying Trump superhero I am now fully aware of the problems in this world and what triggers them. Like overly fully aware, I got it. And I want to move past this, I want to change this world, I want to fight. What can we do from here on Trump superhero? Trump superhero says so happy to hear that from you, I have a plan. Look at all what we discovered in terms of the bad in this world. Statopus and Privatopus are on the top of the trade bubble founding tribes and companies that mainly revolve around the same trade bubble. Besides them, we have the bad students of our world that are breaking their rules whenever they want. And in most cases, you cannot tell who is the bad student, who is Statopus, who is Privatopus or who is the egg, the abuser, charlatan and thief. It is a soup of bad stuff and they are all emerging from the trade bubble. Therefore, the simple plan is burst the trade bubble. But how? That's the question for the next video. <laughs> and that's gonna be super interesting, I promise to you. Now it's about solutions, how we can deal with that mess that is basically on this planet Earth. So yeah, I look forward to the next video. I say goodbye for now and as always, take care and much love.